We have the same challenge in America today that those peasant farmers faced in Russia. We have a government that is perverting science and medicine to advance its political agenda. Pseudoscience, as absurd as Lysenko's, is officially recognized by the state, while real scientists in America are silenced or ostracized. Just as in the Soviet Union 50 years ago, we have so-called journalists on the far left who continue to support these obtuse theories that have no validity whatsoever, and they smear anyone who dissents. Like the Russians, we have to free ourselves from this. We have to continue to fight for the integrity of science, medicine, and the truth. Unchecked, the government will destroy the truth itself. It won't happen this year or next year, but we will rid ourselves of these Stalinist liars in America. It will happen in our lifetimes. The truth shall set us free. It must. It's the only thing that can save us from Obama's Soviet era. That's the last word on zero science in government zero, and you should read it for yourself and study all the references uh, that I refer to in that chapter back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2647. <laughs> the science around climate change is more accepted as people start realizing that even today you, you can put a price again. on the damage that well, climate change I, is doing. You, I, this, you go down to it's Miami and when it's flooding at high tide on a sunny day and fish is swimming through the middle of the streets. All right, let's you know, that, stop right there. You know, th this is becoming not comedic, but ludicrous. It's beyond comedic that a man of this power should get away with such lies without a challenge from the losers. Losers in the media is unbelievable to me. Actually, I shouldn't say it's not unbelievable. It's, it's, it's perfectly understandable. He gets away with everything. It's a dance of death in the West, an actual death in the Middle East. I've told you about it. If he can get away with faking a war against ISIS for two straight years, if he can get away with lying about the, how he's using the Air Force and the military without a peep coming from any of those tin horn generals, in the military, why shouldn't he be able to get away with lies about climate when you have tin horn scientists out there who are dancing to his tune because he pays them to do so? Why? So, what good is screaming about it? I know many of you say, okay, let's say I agree with you, Michael, and I don't, I don't believe him. What do you want me to do about it? I don't know what you should do about it. I'm not asking you to go march on Washington with a pitchfork. Maybe my show is about news and the truth, the way I see it analysis period it's that simple you do with it what you want i'm not an activist i'm not an activist at all i'm a member of uh, the media i'm a commentator i'm not a journalist i wouldn't be caught dead calling myself a journalist because to me to me the word journalist in america is a dirty word it's the world's oldest profession journalism as practiced today in this country is the world's oldest profession it's older than the world's oldest profession at least you know what you're getting for your money with the world's oldest uh, practitioners of the world's oldest profession. But this profession of journalism is not journalism anymore. They're propagandists. That's all they are, the propaganda ministry. And if it wasn't true what I just said, I wouldn't be on the radio. I wouldn't survive a day. If you actually believe the word that the government media complex told you, why would you listen to talk radio? What? Because, oh, well, because you're so entertaining. That's not the reason. I've heard all of it. Oh, we want to hear how the opposition thinks. That's not the reason. It's because what I say resonates with you is the truth. And it gives you the opportunity to say, well, all right, let me hear the other point of view. At least the guy backs it up with, with ideas and facts, rather. The man has a doctorate from a great university. He's written 30 books. He has a best-selling book right now called Government Zero on the New York Times list. I mean, you can't deny the fact that he's a serious person. He has a serious impact on thought, both in America and the world. I can't sit here and make believe he doesn't exist just because I want to make believe he doesn't exist. The guy sounds like what he know, that he believes in what he's saying. Well, so good. That's why you're listening. I don't want you to be taken in by this. It's a nightmare to watch this unfolding because it threatens our very survival itself. When you have a government tasked with defending the American people, and instead of defending us from the greatest scourge since Adolf Hitler, they're lying to us about a non-threat, which they made up from the beginning out of whole cloth. They do threaten our very survival. 
It's no longer laughable. It's no more comedic to have a clown liar like this in the White House. It's terrifying to think that the people would be so gullible as to let him talk about this at a time when ISIS just not two weeks ago mercilessly slaughtered young people in Paris, machine gunned them, and then did you know mutilated them as they lay dying in that in that nightclub? Did you know that they mutilated them? You didn't know that? You didn't know that they mutilated them, these practitioners of the Quran? Oh, I know I'm not supposed to say that. Because every time I hear him say they're not Islamic, that they're not Muslims, I get infuriated. They may not be representative of all Muslims, but I'm sorry to tell you that they're not creating this out of whole cloth because the Quran itself, in 132 instances, call for killing the infidel. I didn't make that up, and I do so at great risk in telling you your very survival is at stake because of Barry from Honolulu and his band of not-so-merry pranksters. And on that note, I'll take a, a, a quick break. And with God's will and your listenership, I'll be back for another hour right here on Government Zero Central. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. For, for some reason, too often in Washington, American leadership is defined by whether or not we're sending troops somewhere. Oh. And that's the sole definition of leadership. No, not and, you, and though. part of what I've been trying to describe uh -huh. during the course of my presidency is uh -huh. that where we make uh -huh. the most impact uh -huh. uh, and where, uh -huh. by the way, we strengthen uh -huh. uh, our uh -huh. relationships and influence the most is when uh -huh. we are Community helping organizing. to organize the world around a particular problem. Right, and that's global warming, of course. Now... Ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Nation, what's the greatest threat to your security, global warming or ISIS? You know the answer, of course. It's ISIS. At the hearings today, the top military officer in America contradicts the lying president. The lying president says ISIS is contained. The top military officer says ISIS is not contained. It came out today. America's top-ranking military officer found himself at odds Tuesday with the nation's commander-in-chief over the commander-in-chief's claim that the Islamic State was contained. General Joseph Dunford, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said we have not contained ISIL currently. He said that at a hearing today before Representative Randy Forbes of Virginia. That answer runs counter to the claim made by President O last month in an ABC News interview when asked about the status of the anti-ISIS campaign. So the military knows it's a lie. And at the Tuesday hearing, that's today's hearing, Defense Secretary Ash Carter announced that the U.S. will send special ops forces to Syria while expanding its special ops presence in Iraq to bolster the fight against ISIS. I'm a little worried about that. And the reason I'm worried about him sending special ops forces to Syria is twofold. One, because special force ops should not work in a vacuum and on their own. I can tell you that I'm not a military person. But I can tell you that I know enough as an armchair general to tell you that you should never send in a special ops force without a backing up of a major military force behind them. You're sending them out on a, on a, on a, on a suicide mission. That's number one. And number two, here's what I really fear. I fear that this devil in the White House is sending in the special ops forces not to take on ISIS, but to hunt and destroy Russian special forces troops. My fear is that he's starting World War III. That's my fear. How do you like that? Has anyone said that yet? Well, no, because no one is as, as insightful as me or as crazy as me. Put it any way you want. There's no other reason that this community organizer who hates the military would finally send special ops forces into Syria unless there was some nefarious reason for it. And the only reason for that is to make sure that the Russian spes ops do not kill any of the friendly terrorists that we have created, the Frankensteins, which we affectionately call friendly terrorists on the savage nation. The moderate terrorists that Obama has created 
are the ones that the special ops may be sending, may be sent there to defend. That's how I see it. Phone number is 855 In the last hour, we spent a lot of time talking about the, the science behind the realities of the climate, as opposed to the finances of the climate change gangster regimes. So let's pick up where we left off and invite you to call at 855 WFTL in Florida. Ron, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, what an honor, first of all. Uh, okay, I, I, follow me on this for just a second. Uh, I, I have a, a couple of uh, real angers. It, it, first of all, I'm a bit of a space nerd, and, uh, you know, I, I wonder why the space community uh, of scientists is not speaking out about this. It's very well documented that the Earth goes through cycles. You know, when, when the Noah's Ark days was going on, do we really believe that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights and caused the Earth to flood? Absolutely not. The polar caps melted, uh, you know, and he built an ark and, and he found some land and, and life went on. He was in a low-lying area. You know, you, you fast forward 25,000 years, you have the ice age. It froze back up. All it takes is just a very, very slight tilt of the Earth's axis, a change in the uh, in the orbit, just ever so slightly, and you and you get this. My my question is: it, it, first of all, it has nothing to do with our carbon print, and second of all, there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. But why is the space scientist community? community not speaking out about this everyone. well for two reasons one because they're all wholly owned by the u.s government and they know if they step out of line they will either be demoted and answer to a complete moron or they will lose their jobs entirely that's how it works in the soviet system ron thanks for the call i'll send you well i would have sent you now here's another weird story state department troubled by moscow's move against soros groups now george soros is perhaps the most dangerous man on the in the history of the world in my opinion, he's done more damage to more uh, sovereign nations than any in my lifetime. I've never seen anything like what this man has done. It was this creature, George Soros, and his unlimited greed for wealth that flooded the world with the refugees that we currently have through his Open Society Foundation, the Open Society Institute Assistance Foundation. He has single-handedly destroyed the structure of the world societies. And so Russia finally acted, and they've banned two of the liberal billionaires' charities. They have labeled this gangster's organizations a threat to national security, something I wish would be done in the United States of America. If we had a legitimate presidency, the man would be excommunicated from this nation, let alone Russia. So take a guess who comes to his aid, none other than Barack Obama through his State Department. Now, I told you what it is about Moscow that they hate the most, but it's also that they hate the truth coming out of Moscow. A spokesperson from Russia's Prosecutor General's office said the activities of the Soros Fund are threats to state security and the Russian Constitution. Of course, the Open Society and the George Soros the money trader disagrees completely. Now, who came to his aid? The State Department. The State Department of the United States said this is another example of the Russian government's growing crackdown on independent voices and a deliberate step to further isolate the Russian people from the world. The exact opposite is true. We have become the new U USSR, and Russia is becoming more like the old USA. That's exactly what's happening as a result of Barack Obama's insanity. George Soros, again, is a very dangerous man in the estimation, not only of Michael Savage, but of thousands of other people who have studied this man's behavior. I don't have to eliminate, uh, uh, delineate for you what he has done and where he's made his fortunes, but let me repeat what I taught you yesterday on this program. George Soros is a great proponent of the global warming lie, a great proponent of uh, green energy, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's for everything good, George Soros. A real good Nick. Just like Warren Buffet, uh, just like uh, Microsoft's Bill Gates, all wonderful people. Very good people. Excellent people. Better than you and I. Far better than you and I. And they're out to save the earth. Well, it turns out that George Soros first attacked Cole through his minions in the propaganda ministry, meaning the press. Then he attacked Cole 
by shorting the stocks. And when the 